the gobsmack Perth Corporate Rumble is just over two weeks away. Today's guest, she's from the red team. She's also going to be part of one of the most highly anticipated bouts of the night. Please welcome Josie, the powerhouse Parfit. Yep. How's, <laughs> how's motherhood been? Oh, I love it. It's the best thing um, ever. She's definitely changed me as a person. Um, How old are you? I am 34 this year. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought you were younger. Yeah, a lot of people do. I am, um, you know, good face, um, Russian <laughs> regime, <laughs> better Botox. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, I, I think before having her, I was, you know, very much into the big nights, late nights. Um, mm. Yes, I've always been very career oriented, uh, very focused, very structured. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you have a little one to be responsible for, and you know, I I personally have a, a FIFO partner, um, so it's just me looking after her. Um, it changes you, you know. It changes your priorities. It changes your view. Your out, you know, your whole mindset. Um, you know what's uh, what's to focus on, what not to focus on. Um, you become very humble. Um, mm. So yeah, it has changed me quite a bit. Jeez. Mm-hmm. It does, doesn't it? It just puts the skids on absolutely everything. Yep. Absolutely. But not in a bad way. Not in a bad way at all. You know, I think before I w- used to get caught up with, you know, drama and... Dra- no know, one likes drama. <laughs> no one likes no. drama. Oh, there's plenty of that going around, around anarchy, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, all the drama. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, what would life be without drama with, and gossip? <laughs> your so. mates with Jess... Uh, Jess Allen, aren't you? It's drama right there. Oh, I mean, I love it. She brings so much life and (laughs) entertainment and just, you know, her phone calls and it's just like, oh, give me, you know, an update on what's happening in your life because you can ask me what's happening and I'm like, oh, I went to training. I cooked dinner. So very boring in comparison. Mm. So, um, yeah. She was in the other day. She was very funny. Yeah. Very funny. Oh, she's great. The stories. She's <laughs> she's up against Marnie. She is, yes. How do you reckon she's going to go? Oh, I mean, the improvement I've seen in Jess, um, you know, since the start has been phenomenal. Yep. You know, not only as a boxer with her technique, her, you know, conditioning, but it's more a mental game for her. Mm. You know, for seeing her evolve um, as a person to be stronger, you know, um, less emotional, less, um, I suppose, reactive and be really, have that aggression with her it's been great so I think it will be absolutely a great um, fight for her mm. obviously she is a bit of a um, undercar because it's her first time Marnie has that experience so she may know how to um, control her nerves and what happens exactly in the night and have more of a game plan um, but I think Jess and her will have absolutely a great bout so do I I reckon I reckon it's going to be good I think with Jess now we're just going to turn this all into Jess, as <laughs> Jess always does. I think Jess's um, almost desire to win, well, not maybe not so much win, but her desire not to lose, I think, is really going to come out. Mm. Like, um, like you said, I think she would be the underdog because Marnie has maybe been boxing a bit later, longer, yep. but. I think Jess is going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah, and I think that goes with the, the, the a lot of boxers as well. You could be great at training. You could have all the confidence oh. under pat. You can, you know, come out on the night and, you know, it can just be a mind game. It can be, you know, if you're not there psychological and you don't control your yourself, and this is something that I, I need to, to be very wary of, um, you know, it can go either way. So, and that's where, you know, a lot of people have asked, oh, you've boxed before? And I say, yeah, 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 I have boxed. I do like it for, um, you know, exercise, conditioning, um, again, mental. So it's nothing better than having a big day at work and then going boxing and smashing the back. Mm. You know, that was my sort of mental outlet. And I then say, well, I haven't sparred. I haven't done any counter punches. I haven't done any defensive work. And that really makes or breaks you you know it's something that you could as i said be great on the bag great combo have everything down packed you step in the ring it goes out the window like out of control (laughs) that's it and it's how 
close a lot of these, or pretty much all of the matches are going to be. Yeah. It all comes down to the mental side of things yep. on that night. Because how, how would you go? This is the first time, I mean, first time majority of people are stepping in there. But it's not just that. It's you've got the build-up, you've got 2,000 people, and they get rowdy. Yeah. It's just screaming at you. And it's it's going to be... Uh, it, it all comes down for me. I, I believe it just all comes down to who's, I suppose, mentally stronger, and who can handle the pressure. Because yeah. every single person's feeling. It. I don't think anyone's going to step in there confident. No, yeah. And everyone's secretly goes, "Yeah, yeah I got this," I'm like, <laughs> and, but secretly they're absolutely, yeah, panicking no, inside. I, I am. I was watching and yeah. I was panicking some oh, of the fights. I went to the October one, and man, I just wanted to jump into the ring. You know, it was something that. You know, it's the the atmosphere, the environment, just it's absolutely phenomenal. So you, as I said, you can go in there and be like, "Yep, yep, this is what I'm going to do." You know, work on this. You know, slip, work on this hook or whichever, and it's out of your control. Mm. And it's something that, um, you know, for a couple of them, you can just see it. Ha- going into a big brawl especially around that third round where you're oh that last Gasp. yeah exactly next minute you'll just be coming up close just laying in there as rips and hooks and just yeah it goes out the window so it's only six minutes but um that's a long ass six minutes someone said it was like sprinting for six minutes and yeah. then someone hitting you at the same time yeah i couldn't sprint for six minutes yeah. Spring for about maybe a minute yeah. and then that's it. Oh. Done. I mean, if you're not watching the clock, six minutes is nothing. But if you're watching it, whether it be I'm on a treadmill or doing a plank or something like that, it's a very long time. So, Jesus. Yeah. This, oh, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> it's not far now, is it? What is no. it? What is it? Uh, what's that? Two, three weeks? Three and a half weeks away? Yeah. <sighs> it is Calm getting on down. there. It is getting there. We better get into this. We've been gas bag. Jesus is unlike us. <laughs> Gas bag for a while. <laughs> First up, I got to get this because I forgot it last time and I felt bad. Mm-hmm. Um, your sponsor, who's your sponsor for the evening? Uh, so it's Quinmore Fire Protection. So that is actually one of my best friends. Um, he's a general manager for the company. Is that Murray Hill? Murray Hill. Mars, Mars. He fought last time. He did. He won. He did win. He's a big boy. He is a big he's boy. He's a powerful boy. Yeah. So good on you. Good on you, Mars. Yeah, no, um, I think, of course, he did a 2019, um, I don't know if it was PCR or through Anarchy, I think it was someone else, and I wanted to do that, but I actually went to Europe at the time, and then he was like, I'm going to do it again, um, so I was like, 100% there, mm. excellent night, it was probably my first night that... Um, I mean, I got a little bit rowdy, got pretty drunk, had a late night. Was that your first night out after the yeah. birth of your yeah, little I mean, angel? I'm more than happy to go out, have a few wines, socialise or whichever, but it's a bit different when you then have to look after a toddler or baby the next day. So she was born in Feb and this was in October, so a long, long time between big nights. Mm-hmm. And in saying that, I still, you know, I was very content, very composed. I think I got home about 3.30. She was early rising at the time, so I was up at 5. Didn't have a uh, babysitter? Oh, my mum was night? over, but I'm someone that, like, I want to take responsibility, you know, so I want to be the yeah, person that no, wakes for me, up. It was, for me, it was out the door. It's, you bring my kids back on Monday. I've said this time round, no, I'm not going to be any motherly responsible on the Very Sunday. Nice. This could be the dad and we're actually flying my partner's mum over from New Zealand. So she's coming over. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's her. That's her time. So, yeah, so Murray will be obviously on my table, on my side. He was... You know, first one to say, yep, I'll get my business to sponsor you. He's a good man, Mars. Oh. I, only, I only had a couple of conversations with him, but he was yep. a good man. Yeah. No, nah, he's an absolute legend. Um, you know, when I spoke before about the fight ended up in a brawl, that's pretty much how that fight Oh, ended. he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he is not conditioned. And <laughs> it's it was one of those fights. It was the second last um, you know, obviously you've had quite a lot of champagne. Oh, it was getting rowdy. It was rowdy. And his opponent's team were absolute 
wankers. Like oh, jeez, like, oh, here we go. All right, they, this is not me saying this. Everyone, direct this at Josie. They Puff were it. no, they were just horrible. They would just kept on running up to the ring, um, you know, really yelling abuse, and I was just like, nah, this is my defensive side going up, and it will just like you know, control these guys, and we're just hoping that Murray, you know, takes and he did, you know, he really left him in his spot. So um, it did get a bit loose there towards the end, didn't it? It did. So the third fight before the end, <laughs> <laughs> from about Aysen, Aysen fight Ryan. From about yep. that fight onwards, it started to get rowdy. Yeah, I mean to be expected, but yeah, it definitely went the next level. Like I, even I remember going around and just like pinching bottles, and you know, you definitely yeah. There was no control over the alcohol consumption. Um, but it made a night and it was great. <laughs> so really excited to be sponsored by him um, and have him there because I was there for him. Oh, beautiful. That sounds great. So tell me why obviously seeing, seeing Muzz put on such a, such a stellar performance uh, in October last year. What was the main reason behind your application? Was it seeing what he did and what he achieved and I suppose all the fanfare behind it? Yeah, no, that's definitely one um, one point that sort of led me into applying and probably, you know, seeing him go through it, then I'm like, yep, I kind of know what's the go. Um, I think for me, as I mentioned, I have been boxing for a little bit, just exercise, and my the coach at the time was, you know, always saying, oh, do you want to do Thunderdrome? Do you want to, you know, step up in an amateur and take it seriously? And it was all Jeez. like, no, no, no. Um, you know, that was when I was working and then baby, and it was it's pretty hard being a, a FIFO partner, um, especially with early mornings and late mm. evenings. You have to get sitters. You don't want their structure to train too much. Mm. Um, and then it came to it and I was like, you know what, I need to do something for me. Oh, yeah. um, um, you know, I need to have that little goal. I need to have that determination um, to do something just for me because it was has always been about Corby since my daughter, mm. since she gave birth, um, since she, yeah, was born. So, yeah, very excited to so this accomplish. Is for you. Yeah. For You've got to do it. I You've do. You've got to do it. Yeah. It is the – from what I've heard from a lot of the people that have come in here is they all have said – or not all – but people have said – that it wasn't until they went to the event, saw it, and then said, that's it, I have to be part of this. Yeah. So it seems like each event almost breeds this next, uh, the people there, the spectators, almost breed the next group of people coming through. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like, it, it's all the night, you know. It's the dinner, it's the dresses, it's the suit up, it's, the, you know, the event, you know, the all the lights, the camera, the action um, that makes it such a attractive event, you know. If it was something that, oh, yeah, go in to do an you know, amateur fire to whichever your local PCYC or, you know, stadium – it's fairly boring, you mm. know, but being up there, have your friends, have your family um, and make a full night of it and also the camp leading up to it, the training sessions, becoming together as a team, supporting each other, making friends, um, you know, that's what really makes people want to do it. The actual event itself, I actually thought it was almost for the uh, for a spectator um, on, for a spectator's side it's it was done better than a lot of actual professional boxing events yeah like I remember going to some of the ones when Danny Green used to fight all the time at, at the Met Superdrome yeah. and not Superdrome whatever it's called now and uh, out of Mount Claremont and and the way they put this on it's it's head and shoulders above yeah. these professional actual events yeah it's abs- incredible oh 100 percent no absolutely. You all excited? I am excited. They do make you a superstar, don't they? <laughs> well, I think the biggest thing is I'm excited, but then I also feel a lot of pressure. So it's about balancing that, um, balancing mm. the nerves with the excitement, um, and then just, yeah, getting it done. What did your family and friends say about this um, application when you said you're actually doing the fight? Um, Mum obviously doesn't want to come. Uh, she doesn't want to see her baby daughter uh, get hit. Mm. Um, so she'll be watching um, the live, well, not the live stream, the, the replay. Um, my sister will be there. So she is 
a little bit, uh, 15 months older than me. Um, I can just imagine her few drinks absolutely screaming her head off. Um, and friends, yeah, no, they know who I am. They know I've done a bit of boxing. Um, I suppose they know my strength and know where what I'm doing. And, yeah, they're excited as well. They also think, obviously, I'll, you know, absolutely clean her up. Um, so, yeah, a bit of pressure on that side and a bit of embarrassment and not wanting to let them down. Mm. Um, but they're stoked. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. It seems like some of the girls have got the most support. Their friends are, are just yeah, one hundred percent behind them. Yeah, and they're intending. Some of the girls, I can imagine. I've seen some of their friends, and they intend to get pretty rowdy on the evening. Yeah, so. it will be a big night. Yours so. will be no different, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the original event was supposed to be in April, April second. Mm-hmm. How have you gone since that event was cancelled and moved forward like the five, six months? Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. Like it has definitely been a long time, very drawn out. And that's probably where the support has come from as well because, you know, you see people and they're like, have you fought yet? You know, when is your fight? You know, is it? and it's it been so many months in, since that. So April, I could have probably got into the ring, um, you know, after a, a – bit of an intense training um and been fine and been happy and then I obviously found out it was postponed and initially straight away I said nah that's it I'm withdrawing like I oh so you were gonna pull out yeah Yeah. so it's not something that I you know wanted to do it was more like you know trying to train with a baby trying to you know always get sitters um and I personally wanted another kid so I was like oh you know that's gonna postpone my sort of um you know not plans but put off for another few months so So this was the last hurrah before number two yeah so I mean you got a wedding to plan now congratulations (laughs) I did see those photos thank you um yeah wedding down the track probably another kid um relatively soon um so yeah it was something that I was like straight away nah I can't keep you know, go into training, get sitters and, um, you know, then sort of postpone everything. But it has worked out. Um, I personally and my partner do go through stages. We're like, yep, we want another kid now. Oh, no, we could wait a little bit longer. Um, and I've sort of even been like, you know, do I want to add this to my plate at the moment? Mm. You know, work's going really well. Baby's doing really well. Um, you know, why change something? So, but then I decided, yep. We'll do it. Let's, yeah, Let's commit down. myself. Yeah. Because that would have been a massive thing for you because you would have had to commit to, say, the 12 to 14 weeks for the April card where you could almost, having a, having a, a very young uh, very young child there, it's almost like you could you could manage that. But when 14 weeks turns into six months, mm. it's a, or even longer than that, eight months, it's a very, very different story, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and it was something that even through that time I was like, oh, I'm so overboxing. I just want to, um, you know, go to a gym with a crèche, uh, work on my strength. And it was something that I actually uh, – I tried to go to Anarchy as much as possible. I tried to go to my gym at the time. Um, uh, it was called Scarborough Gym. They've now um, sold their business to Lucas Brown. It's a big daddy box. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. He's done well. Hey, he's uh, he's uh, won the last two, hasn't he? He has. Since he dropped that one to Gallon. Yep. Follow so. Lucas Brown very closely. <laughs> no, so he's um, actually did a session with him last night. Um, What's he like? Oh, Good man? Yeah, gentle giant. Absolutely. You know, he's a massive man. He's massive. He's an intimidating looking man yeah. as well, isn't he? Yeah, but he he's very high energetic. Um, you know, it would be having pre-workout or a V and he's just like, yeah, yeah, go, 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 you know, like, you know, oh, you know, so it's... Um, Lucas Brown on pre-workout. <laughs> it's next level. Um, so, yeah, I mean, during that time, did try to do sessions there and then I was like, nah, I need a bit of a break. So I think in May and um, I was like, oh, with Murray, with her, his partner and my partner and Corby, we went to Bali. Um, I did see photos of this. Keep, yeah. Keep going. Where did I see? Oh, no, oh. I was actually going to ask about oh, Lily. The, pu- <laughs> the pug. There we go. I was yep. actually looking at the photo there. Yep. That's you in Bali, is it? Yeah, yeah. There's Mars. Look at him. Little Mars. Loves a bucket yeah. hat, Mars. Oh, he loves a bucket hat. Or to cover up all his hair. <laughs> uh, no, Bali was great. Um, I tend to go every few year, um, every couple of years, and um, 
Numer- the- numerous times per year, but obviously haven't done in the past, in a couple of years. That looks like a nice part of Bali. That doesn't look like downtown Cooter. Oh, I mean, that's Potato Head. So everyone knows Potato Head in Seminyak. I don't know you Potato don't Head. Know. I know. How bad is that? I know. I love it. Like, I love the Balinese people. You just get really looked after, especially this uh, when we take this time taking Corby. She was just loved, you yep. know, so safe. Um, we stayed in Changu. We had our butler. We had our cook, everything like that, all inclusive. Um, obviously, went out every day, um, you know, whether it be to Changu, Seminyak, Iluwadu. My partner does ride motorbikes, so we were very safe on the scooter. She adapted so well you know, nap times and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, really good holiday, really needed it. Oh, I can um, imagine. And so, yeah, it made me come back and I was like, yeah, no, nah, let's go. Let's go at it again. So good good month off um, to really sort of reassess, have a bit of a break and then, yeah, come back smashing. That sounds like the perfect way to reset and get your mind back into it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, there was a... Intention there to go over, to go Wanderlust, to go to the bod- uh, body factory, to train. There was no training. No. We drank like every day. So you're drinking that. <laughs> <laughs> All the cocktails. Um, big night at Mexicola. Um, so, yeah, no, it was a great time. Beautiful. That sounds great. That's a that's a great lead. That's probably one of the best lead-ins I've heard because <laughs> I know a lot of people did, did struggle yeah. um, with – the drawn out uh, time between the two. I mean, obviously it was unavoidable due to the COVID rules, but being able to to actually yeah have that time off to reset and almost not feel guilty about yeah. training. I know a couple of people have thought every time they didn't train, they just think I really should be training. My opponent's training now, and that's a long yeah. time—an eight month. Oh, it, that would it's, have been way it's, too much. It's too long. Like in saying that, you know, not many lead ups are that long. So, you know, to to continue training at a high intensity, um, you know, even doing your normal anarchy classes, try and build up your fitness. Um, you know, you couldn't have done it for all this time. You had to have a break. Mm. Um, especially now that training has ramped up considerably. If I didn't have the break, I'd be so like just exhausted. So exhausted. Oh, yeah. So no one likes that. <laughs> all right. Have you got any um, connections to any of the organisers? I'm talking about like your like any of the guys at Anarchy, any of the girls at Anarchy? Um no, I didn't know of anyone. Um I did actually go to university with James Crabtree. Hmm. Um and yeah, just no obviously Murray who else did I know? It's more the fighters that you yeah. knew of as opposed to the coaches. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so. nice. Has there been any changes to your diet since you've been selected to be part of this? Yeah, I mean, from the start, and it was a funny story, and I'll come back to it. Um, I kind of knew that I was going to be up against Jackie. Um, Jackie yes, Toth. Yes. Yep. Jackie. Bloody legend. She's I great. She's in here. Did you hear me absolutely butcher the audio? Ah, uh, no. This thing here packed it in during oh. Jackie's. Oh, just, it broke my heart. I'm sorry, Jackie. <laughs> I've apologised a hundred times, but I'm sorry, Jackie. Yeah. Um, no, she's a bloody legend. Um, so raw, so unfiltered. Um, and going back to, you know, the priority is post-pregnancy and the realisation is, you know, I hate fake people. And mm. you come across Jackie. Oh, she is not. She's not. She doesn't try to be anyone um, but herself. She's uploading cheese crumb sausages every morning um you know with the vulgar language what you see is what you get so bloody bloody lover and you know i knew from the start that there'll be a very good chance of going up against her um yes i'm a little bit taller um not too tall uh in comparison a lot of people think that we're you know the big difference how tall are you i'm 175 centimeters so five five. foot nine okay so i actually got that height when i was probably 16 and then i've stayed the same height okay but my girlfriends are all about the same height but they're the ones that would always wear six inch heels um yeah yeah later down the track just did just did the face off in here she did do the face (laughs) off. yeah i mean i do a little heel but i'm predominantly flat so i remember going out when i was younger going out with these you know tall girls and I was like, oh my god, I'm such a midget. And then it comes to 
come into anarchy. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm tall. But there's a few other tall people as well. Mm. But, yeah, Jackie, a little bit shorter. Um, and she's pro- she was probably about 10 kilos less than me. And I was like, well, what do you do? Do you do, you know, match up someone same height, same, you know, reach, um, same weight, or do you match up someone that is fairly – similar Mm. but in terms of experience and skills um you know more similar so that's where i go to nigel and i said you know if we're gonna match up how much do i need to lose Mm. um and it's something that i i wouldn't say my diet was ever bad i'm not I overeat. You're not, I, you're not cheese sausage <laughs> for breakfast like that. Yeah. Um, not that extreme. But it's saying that, like, I, I hate to track my macros and I hate to not eat something because I'm watching my weight. Mm. But I am a big eater. I love food. Um, you know, I love home-cooked meals and I do love volume. So, um, and I suppose for the past few years, um, not a heavy drinker as well. Like, as I said, worst thing would be with a hangover with a baby. So never drank excessively mm. um, since having her. Um, but I would enjoy like a, a bottle of wine kind of thing, but still be okay. Um, so, yeah, coming up close, it was like, oh, I need to drop a, a bit of weight. How much do you have to drop? Um, I've dropped – I need to get to 68. Now, I think that's the agreed weight um, – uh, Nigel has sort of agreed on Jackie needs to come up to I think 63 now that's still a, a fair amount of gap so I'd like to come a little bit less than that I'm 69 at the moment um, you know if I can drop another couple of kilos and then that Friday sauna weight loss but you're quite water, lean though yeah. you're gonna, how are you going to go dropping that extra weight oh I mean I'm still fairly heavy in my legs and my hips and sort of my shoulders so I, I think that there's, there's enough there muscular <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I still am holding a lot of muscular from my swimming days, strength days, um, but yeah, there's 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 definitely enough fat to lose. <laughs> I am staying out of that one. <laughs> like that. Yep. So I haven't been less than sixty eight in a long time. So I mean, it would be good to get down as well. Um, I just want to make it a fair fight. So yeah, definitely have cleaned up a little bit. Watching what I eat now, um, I've. I wouldn't say I'm one to get rid of alcohol completely. I don't believe in that. I think you it's more of a mental thing. If you enjoy a glass of wine by the Friday, have a glass of wine on by the Friday. You know, you're then going to rock up to train on Saturday morning um, and counteract it anyway. Mm. But if you're then going to go out Saturday night and have a massive night, that's where it's going to neg- negatively impact mm. your performance. So, and they'll know. Yeah. Absolutely. If there's anyone that knows what it's like to have a hangover and the science, it's Glenn and yeah. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can, they can see bullshitters from a mile away. So, oh, yeah. yeah. No, it definitely has tightened up um, and see what I can do the next couple of weeks. Are you big on the prior to this? Were you more a lifting weights kind of girl or did you like your cardio? Um, I've always liked my cardio hit sessions. Oh, um, <laughs> um, but in saying that, like I do, I've never been one to want to lift, you know, heavy squats or whichever. I think my body with, you know, lower back pain and sort of less mobility around my hips prevented me from doing that. Mm. But I love to deadlift. I love to, um, you know, do upper body, uh, really push myself in that sense. So, yeah, definitely mix the whole weight thing is is fascinating i find uh, with females is you go back 10 years and you'd never see the girls in uh in the weight section of a gym you'd always see them on the treadmill on the crossfit machine i don't know crossfit cross trainer yeah. or in in the classes mm-hmm. and i reckon it's great because um the girls that seem to go 50 50 with the guy and they're not scared they're not intimidated i think yep. that was a big thing was the intimidation oh it's i think Personally, I think it's actually to do with social media. You know, the something good come out of social media. This is is unbelievable. Come out of social media because they see these. um, You know, they don't have to be bodybuilders. Bodybuilders, they don't have to be lifters, but they see these females still. You know, you can dress nicely if you want. If you want to go to the gym, Mm. I personally don't. I look like shit. But Jess puts it on (laughs) though. Minimal is and quick is what you do when you you be, become a parent. Um, but you can lift heavy 
And, you know, it's come now through research or education or, you know, watching someone's stories or whichever is to lose weight or to get lean or to get muscular or to get that, you know, female body that you're probably driven by. It's not doing cardio. It's not under eating. It's Mm. basically lifting heavy. It's working those muscles. Um, You know, it's putting food into your body, um, you know, protein and sort of recovery, but it's lifting heavy, you mm. know, and that's, I think it's come about, as I said, social media. So it's great. And they look, yeah, females look good and be empowered. Um, and I do go past a few like female only gyms. I couldn't think of anything worse, you know. It's different. It's a different feeling in those gyms yeah. aren't they? what do they call it? is it curves is that the yeah. one yeah yeah it's almost like curves though sometimes it might be like to get someone in it as, as like a stepping stone to yeah. go into a normal gym which there's definitely you know females that you know it's going to accommodate very nicely mm. but i personally i love going to the gym with mates and i you know you then don't want to go to the gym to the extreme where you've got your you know spaghetti singlets and they're grunting or like telling you to hurry up kind of thing that's me you know there's oh watch no. out. <laughs> Do I look like I do? <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to go there? <laughs> um, no, but yeah, definitely not that extreme. But yeah, mingle, have you know, feel confident. You know, if you want to wear a crop top and you've got a bit of a, you know, who cares? You mm. know, it's about who you are. Um, does it affect who you know who you want to be? No. Beautiful. That sounds great. But all this positivity, it's great. It's, it's a nice change. I'm one for equality and diversity and oh, empowering yeah. females. So. I think it's. I actually think it's a good thing. Seeing um, because if this if this boxing event, for example, was happened say 15 years ago, you'd be lucky to get one female fighter in there. And that's nothing. That's not saying that guys wouldn't choose the girls. They'd, they'd obviously love to. They've always been, mm. you know, all about equality. Those guys. But it's more. I think girls would be either. Maybe intimidated to yeah. do it. You definitely wouldn't have the applicants you get nowadays. Yep. So good on you, girls. Woo-hoo. Keep it up. Imagine, imagine a yeah, PCR girls. girls only. Imagine that. Ah, oh. oh, that'd be painful. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to no. say, go for them. <laughs> no. It wouldn't go be painful. No, having twenty eight of you in here, Jesus, yeah. gas bag in the whole time. What is the hardest bit of your training? Um, I think. For me, it's the sparring component. Um, I could box, yeah, eyes closed, go crazy. Um, but I have been doing some PTs with Nige and with Jess as well. So, mm. been you know, having Jess alongside me has been great. Um, then Nige gets up and I start sparring him. And that is hard. Mm. You know, he obviously goes light, um, but he does try to work me hard in the ring. And if you're trying to, you know, hit someone that's 100, 110 kilos and you're laying into him and it's absolutely doing nothing, nothing. he then comes over with a jab or a, you know, overhead and gets you and you're just exhausted. Um Absolutely great feeling afterwards once you get over how exhausted you are. Um, but yeah, it's that reality check of you do it, you, you've been great, you're feeling great. I do a lot of sp- sparring and boxing with the girls. Um, I do need to sort of tone it down at times, um, you know, to get them to sort of learn and, you know, not go too heavy on them. But then I jump in with Nige and it's just like, oh. Oh, I feel yeah. like I'm, you know, so heavy, so shit, not moving around. Um, so it's with him. It's pretty so where you're going to make your thing. most improvement. Uh, the most improvement is when you're fighting people who obviously are a lot bigger and more experienced. It's going to make you lift. Yeah. It's been, you know, trying to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in the, the training session. So on the night you feel as though, you know, you're not trying to move a 100 kilo person. Yeah. You're trying to move a 63 kilo person. So, yeah. Have you ever been hit, like really hit? Yeah. Yep, definitely in the, the ring. Um, I've had a couple of blood noses. Is uh, this just with this training? Just with this training, Is this yeah. the first time you've been hit? Um, I had, I think in April um, at Scarborough Gym, my old gym, we did a, a few sparring and the guys were great there because 
they obviously they dial it down a little bit, yeah. um, but they still want to make you work. Yeah. And one of the nights, a guy um, went pretty hard out, um, and I had he got me good, and I sort of was like, nah, fuck this, like I'm I'm done. Like I was about to take my um, glove off. Went to the right, went to the left, and he just gave me one in the the neck. So my oh, head, geez. so my neck just went, um, you know, got a bit of whiplash there, and it was painful. And yeah. from then on, learn never to to look away or walk away, mm. um, because yeah, having that sort of type of hit. Oh, it took days to get over it. Not only did I have sort of blood nose, but my neck, my back, I was just in pain. So it was like a shock. Yeah, well, I was. I just gave up. I was like, "Stop fucking punching me," mm. um, and started to walk away. Next minute, he just yeah, got me good. Um, and because I had already turned my neck, it just yeah, <laughs> snapped it around. <laughs> so yeah, that was probably the only other time. Um, unlike Jackie, I'd say I was never a street fighter. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> The street fighter. Watch out. <laughs> so I think that's where the brawler comes into it. Dirty I'll, fighter. Watch ooh. those eye gouges. Ooh, she bites as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, does. she doesn't. Yeah. I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, well, that's good. And yeah. and that's why I've seen some of the sessions that the guys there have put you through and the girls as well. Mm. And they, they definitely don't take it easy on you, but they almost do it in a, in a respectful way. Yeah. Like they know that they do tone it down, but also they don't go easy on you. Yeah. They're not going to sugarcoat it, you know. They're going to they're going to give you a, yeah. give a touch up if it if it needs to happen. Oh, the the biggest thing that you could piss me off or my biggest hate is for a guy to go too light. Easy on you? Yeah, yeah. you don't need to. No. You know, like you don't. You know, who do you think you are? Like. Ugh. You can tone it down a little bit to obviously give me, you know, a bit of a chance, but to dial it all the way down, it will just make me angry. And I have it's happened a couple of times where next minute I'm just laying into them. It yeah. is tough though. It is tough though for a guy because you want to be respectful, and and we do. I think we've always got this. I oh know this is I suppose for me is there's always this respect for women, but it, it's just that fine line. Mm. I think I, I think I'd find it hard. I think yeah. I'd find it hard to spar a, a female only because almost had this this thing you know embedded in me that not to lay hand on a female ever so i don't know how they do it and actually like it is actually very hard to to dial it down Mm. you know when you're sparring because even i find at times um you know i'm trying to go light with the girls get them moving um you know and yes i've caught a, a quite a few hits with them um and but sometimes i have taken it too far because i can't work on my intensity work on the speed without having a bit of power mm. and next minute you know black eyes blood noses and i'm like oh shit plus you got to be you got to get used to actually going at 100% as yeah. well don't you yeah how do you think you're going to go with hitting someone oh no problem Jeez, you girls, savages, <laughs> absolute savages. All the girls, yeah, no worries. I'd find it hard. I don't yeah. think I could. No, I think... Uh, Unless it's someone you know, I really dislike. And how can you dislike Jackie? <laughs> no, I don't think anyone can dislike Jackie. She doesn't like um, you, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Aww. I'm joking, no. Nothing good things about you, she yeah, said. Um, no, I think if you don't like punching someone, you wouldn't apply. You know, yeah. there's no, uh, yeah, you you need to be able to punch your best friend. And that's, you know, Jess is with us and we're sparring weekly. So, um, and there's no, and we look forward to not having to hit each other. Um, but, yeah, it's it's boxing. It don't, is. Don't be a fighter if you don't like punching nah. someone. <laughs> I'm happy to sit on this side of the desk and never see me on that side. You got any injuries? Um... I mean, I do... She's got Jackie on the phone here. Yeah, She's listening in. Yeah, I won't say. Um, no, I mean, in terms of, um, yeah, one of my wrists is pretty bad. Um, I broke it a few times when I was younger and it's just never recovered. So I just need to be wary on that side. So I tend to favour the other one. Um, and my lower back. And that's just predominantly um, working from a laptop you know, 12, 14 hours a day. So, um, yeah, that's a bit sore. So, yeah, a bit of work in the coming weeks to really loosen that up so I can really, mm. you know, dodge those those punches and move around um, like I, I, I need to be. But, yeah, so I'm a little bit 
at the moment where I probably should get my wrist looked at because I think there's a, probably a broken bone or whichever, but just it's not going it to happen. You'll yeah, it's fine. just going to tape it up. <laughs> tape it up. Tape fixes everything. I'm going to tell my kids. Just put tape on it, boys. Oh, sun- Sunday morning, I was like, oh, shit, I was in a rush to training and I go to the guys. I was like, oh, can we just, you know, take a little bit more extra time to, um, you know, warm up, loosen up. And so we probably added a minute more to the warm-up and Mm. next minute Nigel was like, girls, in the ring. Yep, Josie in the ring first. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, yeah, we have uh, up to him. I was like, oh, shit, what's going to go? And I was laying in and there goes my my wrist and I just like dropped. I was like, oh, no. Because I didn't tape it up. And then I was like, yep, all good. So he's just like, yep, we'll just do lefts. You know, keep your right hand there. Well. Edit that bit out. Sorry. <laughs> um, just work on your other hand. I was like, yep, all good. <laughs> and then my back went and my neck went and it like, it just got me, it just tweaked. Um, and then he was like, no, nah, we're done. And I was like, oh God. And I just felt horrible. I felt as though, you know, I had such a good week's uh, training, did double sessions, worked really hard, felt really good sparring the girls. And then I jumped in the ring with Nige and it was just like, fuck. No, nah, I'm done. And then he was saying, oh, then, you know, got back in the ring again, but it was against the girls. And I was like, I just want to go up against him again. Yeah. But luckily he was like, Josie, come in the ring again. Um, and it was a lot better. Yes, mm. I was sore, but got through it. Um, so it was a bit of a, a mental thing for me that I could back it up. Um, but, yeah, old body injuries. Yeah. It's good that, <laughs> if, if anything, as you look at a positive for this, it's good that it happened now yeah. and not two days prior because now you're aware of it. I'm sure yeah. you'll be making sure you're nice and flexible in the neck and the back and yeah. make sure you put some of that tape on that. <laughs> on that. We won't say which wrist, but I know which wrist. Yeah. The money. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I've definitely upped the mobility, you know, the deep pay, the sauna, the spa and things mm. like that just to loosen up because, you know, you can really tell a stiff boxer, you know, you're not slipping, you're not moving around. Um, you know, you could have the most powerful hits, but if you're just like in the centre line, you're just going to get hit. So. Mm. Yeah, a bit of um, flex- uh, fl- flexibility and mobility moving up. What's your footwork like? Um, pretty bad. Um, I suppose I've always uh, – I'm a lazy boxer. I like to stand still and just give it a punch. Oh, yeah. So it's been – so- Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's something that I have been very cautious about and working on is to be more mobile, really to use the space, move around. Um, you know, that's probably one of the, the fight plans as well is that Jackie would probably want to come in close, um, use her height as an advantage because I don't like working in close. I feel like... Like a, I'm an imbalanced giraffe falling over her. Do you have any fears or concerns about the event itself? Um, I mean, a lot of nerves um, and concerns is that I – and there's nothing wrong with losing, but I don't want to lose. I think everyone I – know, I know no one's in there to lose. Yeah. But I think the nerves, I, I think you'd be lying to say that, that you're not experiencing – I think everyone is experiencing them almost at the same level. And I don't know what the answer mm. what the answer is. Hopefully, when you get in there, yeah, you can you calm as a. I think the biggest thing with boxing is you don't. It's not within your control. You know, I'm no. a, a swimmer back in the day, and you could have a race plan. You can, you know, pretty much control what you're doing because it is all on you. Whereas a boxing event. You know, it's out of your control. You don't know how the start's going to go. Yes, you can have obviously a, a fight plan, but it can go out the window straight away. Oh, yeah. You don't know how you got to, you know, um, whether it be defensive or aggressive or, you know, she may hit me wrong and I'm going to get winded or whichever. So, yeah, there's that uncontrol- um, uncontrollable part of it that makes me nervous and that I'll probably stumble into the ring to begin with. <laughs> um, if anyone's going to just like fall into to the ring because they're gonna you know get caught on the rope it's gonna be me um i've done it multiple times at training so it's the nerves from getting going the start of the fight um and it's yeah having that internal and external pressure on me to win Mm. is what i'm concerned about because it is it is a big 
thing. I'm not trying to make the situation worse, but <laughs> you've got um, you put in nine months of training. Uh, you've got all your family and friends. There. It must just be. It must be a lot of pressure, and the fact that you guys and girls can do it is it's really it's it's an achievement mm. to even just be able to step in there, no matter what the result. Yeah. So I think a lot of people will be you know proud um, oh, if yeah. I win or if I lose, but I think personally because a lot of people have known that you know I have boxed for a little bit, they're like, "Nah, you'll smash her!" Like absolutely no questions asked, and I'm like, "No, Jackie's like she's." bloody good you know she's got a lot of power behind her you know she's got the stamina she's got the conditioning for you know 40 days and she's been training mm. you know like I do joke um previously in some other interview uh that we did was why are you training so much why are you doing two hours a day every single day and I was like shit she's training two hours a day every single day so it's something that she'll be ready mm. you know and a lot of people don't know that you know, they don't know who she is. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't. it's not going to be an easy fight. It's going to be a big fight. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely up for anyone. I was going to ask you who your opponent's going to be, but we do actually know this. We've mm. talked about it many times. I think I've got a photo. Where are, Where's that photo I've had of you guys? Look at that. Mm. Whoever, whoever took the photos this year, well done. Yeah. The photos this year are by far the best photos I've seen out of all the um, – all the PCRs. Who do you know who took the photos? Was it Millie? No, no, a guy. This was back in. Was it February? I was there that day. Yeah, I do remember. I day? do remember when it was black um, and white. I mean, I probably don't come across as the most aggressive boxer there. Like I've got a bit of a half smile. So they could have airbrushed my arms a little bit. I have toned up a bit, so I do feel as though. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm very I've got big arms and yeah, I wouldn't say the most aggressive photo that they could probably have selected, but yeah, that, I like it. That is luring me into a very false sense of security. <laughs> I saw these photos, I went, Oh, she's all sweet and innocent. <laughs> Obviously not. And your nickname. What's your nickname for the event? It's Powerhouse. Powerhouse. Yeah. How'd you come up with Powerhouse? Oh, I mean, my nickname, walkout song, whichever, I was like, I have no bloody idea. And it was Could just... Could have called me. <laughs> I, this this yeah. is where I shine. This is where you shine. Um, no, it was just something, I don't know, rhyming with Parfit. And I'm like, oh, you know, people do sort of mention how powerful my hit is. So I was like, yeah, Powerhouse, done. Easy, send it. <laughs> and your walkout music, this is going to be so good. This is my favourite part, I'm, I'll be honest. What's your walkout music? Um, I don't know if I want to say. Okay. Well, no, hey, no. we'll cut it out. We'll cut it. No, we'll we'll leave don't. a break. No, no, we can leave this. Out. A couple of people haven't put it in. Yeah. I don't think who was. I think Esty left hers out as well. So we'll just have a break. You can tell me, then we'll come back it, in. That's surprisingly good. Not saying that I expected you to pick something bad, but a little different. I I hope, think it's good. I hope no other boxer has it, but it will. Yeah, pump me up, and I think it is a bit trendy at the moment, so it'll pump the crowd up. If, I think if you did have the same as someone else, though, would have actually told you that's why you had that's to submit good. it all. No one, no one has had this particular one, which I'm not going to mention. But this will be good. Oh yeah, it's getting me pumped now. <laughs> that's great. On September four, the morning after, after the shenanigans of Oct- uh, September three, what are you hoping to have got out of this whole thing? Um, I think the biggest thing is taking the win. Obviously, having taking that the win belt, and the belt, having the belt. that that belt. that belt. I actually didn't realize you get a belt. See my belt up there? Is it blow up? <laughs> yes, it is. It's inflatable, <laughs> but it's massive. It's quite massive. <laughs> um, that is hilarious. You yeah, bought your belt. Pretty sad. Um, no, I didn't actually realize until All right, I was we're in- wrapping it up now. <laughs> I didn't saw my belt. <laughs> Sorry. Um, didn't realize until I went into Murray's house, and I was like, "Oh, you actually have the belt." Keep the belt. Um, I mean, I had that belt for the rest of the night for him. Like I was wearing it proud, and I was like, "Yeah, I got a belt." Um, as I said, that was after quite a few problems. Few with um, no, absolutely, take the win. Um, have that achievement I think the biggest thing for me was I wanted to see a change in my body in my strength um and you know I can see it has changed I can I've definitely got stronger you know before coming into this I probably 
you know, couldn't even do a couple of push-ups or chin-ups and now I can do sets of 10 and 20. So definitely, um, and, you know, going to anarchy as well, it would be, um, you know, I'd be exhausted just in classes. Mm. You know, my arms would be sore. You know, you've got three-minute rounds, unless you're Glenn who gives out five-minute rounds. Um, And I was just like, well, you think you're fit until you go there. Mm. So massive realisation that I wasn't fit. So, yeah, I do want to come out of it, obviously, the best looking, feeling, physically fit, um, you know, that state of mind, um, massive thing for mental health as well. I feel as though at the moment, um, you know, it's assisted with my work, um, it's assisted how I look after my baby, how, you know, I'm with friends. So, yeah, it's a whole different package, I'd say, from who I am. Um, So, yeah, that's what I want to get out of it. Does a lot. That's great. Yeah. I think people, it's amazing, isn't it? Like you go into it and have a boxing match, but everyone seems to come out of it 10 times better than they went in. Yeah. When everyone thinks that, oh, it's boxing, you're going to come out damaged, but just the state of people, no. like the mental, it's the mental thing. I think yeah. everyone seems to be in such a good spot at the moment. Yeah. Mental, your, you know, defensive, as defensive, um, you know, your aggression, your, how, your stamina, um, really, you know, determined to like achieve a goal and commit yourself. So, yeah, so many different things mental, psychological, physical, um, all these components that, you know, in the lead up, the camp, the night, you know, it's, how you don't just come away with a black eye, blood nose and, you know, embarrassed. You come away as a better person. Mm. And you stay in the crown? We are, yes, yeah. That'll be right. Yeah. Shoot up to the room afterwards, get changed, come back down, enjoy. Yeah, quickly get dressed, get dulled up um, and enjoy the night. I do want to watch the other fight, so I'm going to be doing my makeup in a minute. And then putting a dress on and going down. <laughs> keeping keeping the, uh, the cornrows, the braids in? Yep. Yeah. Badass, all you girls, aren't you? <laughs> all right, we're going to run through the whole card here. 14 fights. I thought it was 13. It's 14 fights. It's just entertainment all night. It's nonstop. Yep. We're going to go through here, and I want your predictions on who's going to win. Fight number one, I believe this is – I've had this order change 50 times, so if anyone listens to some <laughs> of the first shows, you'll see I was completely out of order. First up, we have the badass, Claudia Borelli against Chop Chop Otieri. Um, red team, Kiara. She has done. She's so funny. She's great. Um, but the change of an improvement of her skills, um, throughout this time, she's definitely put in the effort, the work, the PTs, the techniques on point. Even on Sunday, I was sparring against her, and I was like, "You little midget!" Um, and I was like, oh, "Don't, don't give it. She's so don't small. Get, don't get defensive." But I'm like, the way you're moving around and rolling, and I'd go for a punch, and she'd roll away. I was like, "Wow." That is awesome footwork, awesome technique. Haven't seen much of Claudia, um, so, but I think Yara's got it. It's a big call. I haven't had the pleasure of talking to Claudia yet. I was going to have a sister in here, actually, yep. and um, then they've, they've actually switched out. But no, mm. Chop Chop, I think, is very funny. Yeah. She loves a, a costume change. I wonder if she's going to be changing clothes in between <laughs> rounds. Okay, next up, you fight number two. Ooh. That is a good spot. I thought you were co-main, but that is actually a great spot for you guys. Yeah. No, pretty happy with that. Pretty... Like, happy that the nerves won't build up throughout the night. I saw how Murray, you know, kept on coming back to the table and he kept getting nervous after each fight. The crowd's not going to be too rowdy, but we're not first. We're just going to get it over and done with, enjoy the rest of the night, hit the drinks. And, um, yeah, I'm kind of wishing we're a little bit sort of like four or five maybe Um, just because, you know, the audience is not going to be full bottle. Like they're enjoying their entree, you know, not too quiet, not too loud. But, hey, I'm I'm happy with second. I think that is a perfect spot for you guys. Yeah. I really do. I was always, I thought you were co-main. I was going, nah, they should be co-main because I, I think – As in 13th? Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought this was going to be – this is probably one of the most – for me, this is the most exciting because obviously I've met you and I've seen you train and I've met Jackie and I've seen – this one, I co- completely on the fence with this one and I think that you guys – 
I, I think there's, it's almost impossible for you guys not to put on a show. Yeah. And I think you're going to set the set like a good example and set the tone for the rest of the night. I reckon that's why they put you – I could be wrong, but I reckon that's why they put you second because this one is going to get people invested straight off the bat. Yeah. And that first one between Chop Chop and, and – and, um, is it Lauren? Jeez, I keep getting that wrong. Claudia. Claudia, Claudia not Lauren. Sorry, Claudia. <laughs> Even that one's going to be good. Next up, we have Mayhem. She's back. Against the Jessinator. It's definitely going to be a good fight. I've seen Marnie train. She trains hard. She actually does have a big punch. Good footwork now with Marnie. Yeah, she's worked on that. um, But big, powerful punch. She'll get head in. Just try and bash Jess. But Jess, she's come a long way. I'm going to obviously go for her because she is my girl in my red corner. She's improved so much. She's got the defense. She's got the hit now. She's not afraid to lay into to me. So she would definitely not be afraid to lay into Marnie. Um, Jess has got this. That's confidence. That's three, that's three <laughs> from three for the red team. Next up, Feather Hands, James Ross. He's so funny, that guy. Against primetime Paul Onofaro. Calendar boy, Paul on a fire. <laughs> Calendar boy, prime time, absolutely. Hey, I bloody love Paul. James, definitely a character. Um, Imagine if James took it seriously, how good he'd be. <laughs> how can you not take him seriously with that, like, no, though? <laughs> Jesus, the chopper. Um, I'm going to go again for red with Paul. Um, everyone bloody hates the Southpaw. Um, and I know as an orthodox, you – hate southpaws because you're always going to tumble over their their right foot their lead foot and you know that's where you're not going to um know what punches to look out for so i think he's going to surprise him and get him good is he the only southpaw yeah prime time oh i think so yeah It'd be hard to train against orthodox if you're fighting a southpaw wouldn't yeah it there must be glenn surely he's got some southpaws in there that you can train against um I know because I did speak with James and it was funny because Paul was next to me and he goes, oh, I really need some sparring time against the Southpaw. And then I was like, oh, my old coach is Southpaw. You can probably get him to come down. And Paul's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, scrap that. Don't. (laughs) Next up, I haven't – am I going to – I think Rach may be coming in in about two weeks. Yeah. The guillotine against the killer. Vizwa. Yeah. How are we going here? Um, I've seen Viswa uh, train a little bit more than Rachel. However, Rachel does have power. Mm. Um, she and I haven't. Yeah, I said I haven't seen her train too much, but did a bit of you know just playful body work. And oh, yeah, you don't want to get hit with a her hook or a rip. So again, I think red uh, team. Red Got to be going red team. <laughs> Oh, this one here. <laughs> the, these girls are just going to be laughing at each other the whole time. Yeah. Megan the Stallion. I only found out who that was the other day. Yeah. Megan the Stallion against. Oh, the a, rapper. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's how out of touch I am. She's against a spicy disaster, Courtney, who's coming in here Thursday. Oh, C- nice. Cannot wait, Courtney. Yeah. No, she's a character. Who do you reckon here? Um. Look, I'm going to go for my girl again. It's going to be Courtney. Got to go, um, Red Tone. Got to stick with the tone. <laughs> you know, Courtney, um, again, has come a long way. I remember when we first started getting together, um, you know, her hands were so high and it, she does some classes, her, so her fitness is up. And I was like, well, you, you, it's like you're afraid to get hit. Mm. Um, and she got a hit a few times and now she's lowered it down. She asked great questions in training. A lot. Um, yeah, I, no, I wouldn't say a lot, but, it, you know, great questions is like, what would you do this? How do you do it? How do I put oh, my okay. hands? So all technique-wise. And if she can, like, bring, you know, remember that, bring the basics, um, you know, to the ring, um, I think she'll go a long way. She's done pretty good sparring up against me. I haven't been obviously sparring against Megan, um, so I don't really know. She has been training. Um, she has been, I think, putting in a lot of effort with Esty, um, but I think Courtney's got this. These two girls just seem to me they're too nice. <laughs> they are just the two of the nicest girls that that I can imagine, and I think they're going to be. I don't think they're going to be able to hit each other. No, oh, it's similar to me. Everyone thinks like I'm an innocent girl, like can't hurt a fly, like a mother hen, but never underestimate a female. 
If you get them angry, oh, I'm married to redhead. Oh, okay, fiery. Um, you know, a flick of a switch. You know, we can change. We can turn. You know, either of them can just be hit, and you'll see a whole different person. <sighs> That'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. So are they? Number six. Number seven. Esty, don't test me. Terrible name, Esty. She's confident. <laughs> so confident. I so did confident. listen to some of the, the podcasts last night and I was like, ooh, confident. Mm. Love it. And she's bloody looking amazing. Um, Eva, she's great. She's, she's also a mum. She's bloody strong, bloody fit. Um, she's absolutely walloped me um, doing cardio. Um, she will have the stamina. Esty has the power, the technique. Her, she's doing a whole heap of training, mixture of boxing and conditioning. Um, again, oh, this is a hard one. The mental – I've only had a brief conversation with, with the machine. I think her mental strength, I think that's going to be – that's going to that's gonna either win it or lose it because she seems to just – I mean, being a mum, yep. it does obviously does change yeah, her. It does, yeah. No, she, oh, she's a goodie. Um, fence, def- you can sit on the fence for one if you I'm want. I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna be on the fence. It's so hard this one. They're so I, different the two of them, aren't the they? The confidence, the technique, the power, how far she's come. Also, seeing that in Eva. Eva can go the distance. Um, technique wise, a few things to tweak, but. I think it'll be a, it'll be a great two, fight. Three and a half weeks. Next up, the Moose, Tommy Humble against Justin Tate. I actually haven't seen um, much of the the actual sparring and sort of fighting between these guys. Tommy's done it. Tommy last did it a couple year. of years ago, yeah. didn't he? That's right. So a bit of an uh, yeah, big boy, yeah, pro there. I've seen Justin go at it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to say Justin. Yeah. Of course, nah, you got to yeah, stick with the red team. Okay, Jason Smith, <laughs> the Coburn Cavalier. I'm, listen, I have nothing against Big Shiv. Big Shiv, I've met him. He's a, he's a lovely yeah. guy. I am 100% on the Coburn Cavalier train. Yeah. I'm 100% Jason Smith oh, on this really? one. Really? Yep. Yep. The old man. How do you reckon? Get it, old man. Nah, oh, both are legends. Bloody Big Shiv. He's looking great. Um, although he needs to be. But. Um, I'm going to say, how can I not go for someone on red team? It's yeah, like I'm true. not supporting my I know, team. I know. This is no, a bad I... set of questions here. <laughs> okay, I'll just go blue team the whole time. <laughs> Jason Smith, nah. get it done, mate. Bloody nah. awesome fight. But Big Shiv's a good man as well, so I yeah. don't want to see that. Okay, next up, Johnny Steins against David, the Clouser La Rusa. Oh, David, yeah. No, nah. do you know he's sporting a bit of blonde hair at the moment? Is he? Is he yeah, going to be support? Kind of is he going to be wearing a three piece suit in the ring? Probably. He rocked up to our matchup suit of three piece. He always Very dresses stylish. so well. Is he, Dave? I'd I'd give him extra points I think just it's for the, his uh, suit. The house, uh, the the home salesman. Um, nah, seen him train. He's pretty on fire. Dave. Yeah. Done. The X Man, Kyle Atkins against Danger Mouse, Troy Thornton. Jesus, they're getting big, these boys. They are getting big. Look at these muscles. Jeez, I didn't realise. Um, haven't seen much of Troy box, actually, or fight, because I think, um, was he a fill in? I think he was a fill in. I think he came in later. Yeah. I think. So we only pretty much, I hadn't seen him at the start, and then we came together and we just did, I think, a Saturday and Sunday, and I don't think he was there. So Kyle, I think, has done it again. Before these guys weren't at weigh-ins, didn't one of them? I think one of them had COVID from memory. Kyle. They, they weren't at weigh-ins. Oh, not weigh-ins. Um, face-offs. I th- was it? Was it Kyle? Um, he actually went to another boxing gym and got his nose smashed in. A uh, <laughs> bit of a cheap shot, I think. Um, but I've seen him train. He's pretty on point. He's on fire. So I'm going to go with the Axman. Okay, the expert Louis Watson. Yeah, against Marco Fam, the Phenom. Phenom. Phenom all day. Oh, Marco's got it. He, he's, he, when I was talking about guys that take it too easy and I hate, he's definitely not one of them. He, and I do actually want to get some sparring in with him because doesn't take it easy, knows how to dial it down a little bit, not to keep on, you know, absolutely smashing him, but he has no, he's not afraid to hit me. So he's got the technique, he's got the reach, he's putting in the hard efforts and always that training. 
Morning's night, so Marco's got it. Okay, so you're 12 for the red, zero for the blue. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Uh, Kevin Reese, the blade against Nigel. Oh, I haven't seen much of Kev. Nig- Nigel, good. Nigel's a good character. He's he's good. Uh, on the fence, not too sure, only because I haven't seen how Kev's trained. Kev's looking in great shape. Hey, it, and this is something with these photos. I wish we had them retaken recently because uh, so everyone has either leaned up, toned down, lost fat. Like, it's, yeah, the transformation has been incredible. Okay, so you're on Team Nige? Yeah. 13 and 0. <laughs> nice. And last one, this one. What Bloody a way to finish. Bloody hell. The it's confidence on Fraser Blades oh, is... Oh, he is confident. But, Woody... I've known Woods for a long time, so... Um, we've been friends for oh, 15 or so years. So it, it's very hard for me because he's, uh, bloody love him. Um, and you're on the red team. You don't have to pick this one. You just, just don't pick this one. Just not, tell me yeah, how not, good this fight's going to oh, be. Oh, this is going to be absolute brawler. Like it's going to be like Woodsy's, I know, I think Glenn mentioned about, oh, you know, how confident are you? And like Woods is going to put the, the training in or whichever. I've seen him at all states go, you know, from a big night out, big bender, rock up he to the rugby up. feet. He backs everything up. So he's got the, he may not have the full conditioning, but although even this morning I, I messaged him and I was like, Matt, you've upped the training. You're you're getting it done. Um by that third round, will he be gassed out? Will Fraser be gassed out? You know, I, I know his family and I know who's going to be there. And they're like, I'm going to support you, Josie, but you're on the wrong team. Um, and I was like, oh, it's similar to Woods. But then Fraser, um, he's been a bit sick at the moment and his first session is back Fries. tonight. Yeah. He, um, similar to me, having kids with his twins, um, brought home a lovely um I don't know, contagious disease or whichever. So Jesus. he's been a bit sick. Yeah. Um, not feel he actually took the week off. Um, made the decision to take the week off and come back nice and strong. So, Matt, this is going to be a fight. This is going to be awesome. What a way to finish it. Yeah. Do you remember last year's? The with, last yeah, one. Yeah, with Walker yeah. and Chris Mills. Yeah, and broke my heart. Mm. I was Team Chris Mills. Oh, you were Team Chris. <laughs> oh. That's all right. Yeah. No, nah, this is a, a good finisher. Everyone's going to be. Absolutely rowdy. I know all the people that uh, Woodsy has at his table. They're going to be. They were there last year. They're going to be rowdy. Um, no, yeah. He brings the heat, but Fraser. He's he's very confident. He's a very confident man. And who's got more confidence, Fraser or Esty? Esty. Esty. Oh, I mean, they're both the same at the moment. They're I was like, really oh, confident. even I can't. I, like, no, I'm not confident. Like. I don't want to talk myself up too much because then I'll be like, oh, shit, I fucking, yeah, sold sold the win and didn't achieve it. <laughs> Looks like a bit silly. But, um, yeah, no, nah, this is a banger. Every single one of these fights could go either way. That is the beauty of these fights, yeah. isn't it? That's so good. All right, so on the fence. So you got 12, 13 for the red <laughs> and one on the fence. I try. I try to depict it and actually give an honest opinion, no matter what uh, side. It doesn't I'm on, sound like it. Sounds like you're just picking the red people. I because th- I, I actually and I, I couldn't recall actually trying on red, but it's so funny. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm blue. Um, I want to be in the blue team, and then I was like, oh, I'm in red. Um, but yes, yeah, stoked I am. Love Nige. Love Ben. Love Coach V. Um. And as a team, I think we've come together so well, um, supportive of each other, like just the banter, the chat. Um, It's been phenomenal. Oh, it's great. It's great to hear. Yeah. All right. We're only, what, three and a half weeks away? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming in today, Josie. It has been an absolute pleasure having you in here and getting your insights into your training Plus your uh, up-and-coming win over Jackie Toth. That's exactly what you said. <laughs> I will cut out the bit about your music and make that a big surprise for everyone thank on the night. But um, thank you very much for coming in, mate. And after September 3, if you ever feel like coming back in, you are more than welcome. Yeah. You probably see me if I get the belt. Maybe not if I don't. <laughs> Front runner. Bring the belt. If you do win the belt, I want to see it. I haven't oh. actually touched one yet. So. That is. All right. Thank- <laughs> Thanks, Joyce, and we'll chat to you soon. Thank you.